Uh, I started late. I uh, started at the age of 30, which is when I started professional acting. I was a late starter. I used to work in advertising before that. A sort of professional job was with a professional theatre company in Auckland in New Zealand and I was in the company and a standard working day would be that uh, you'd, in the morning you'd go down to Radio New Zealand and do radio drama, that was in the days when they had radio drama and then in the afternoon you'd rehearse, then in the evening you'd perform um, and, and so it went on. There was um, Radio drama was quite big in those days both here and in New Zealand and uh, it was a great training ground for voice work and a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And out of that, um, what happened in those days in New Zealand, I'm talking about mid-70s, there weren't any voice over agents and there were hardly any acting agents. Um, so advertising agencies and studios would come to the theatres and, and see who was there and then and they'd cast from theatre actors. So that's how I got into, into um, commercial voice work. I actually find it pretty easy and, and, and enjoyable. I think the most challenging thing is I find when you go and do a voiceover job when there's a lot of people there, like a lot of clients and a lot of people, and everybody's putting their oar in. I remember one, I won't mention any names, but I did one voiceover tag for a TV commercial. I think it had seven words. And I was there for just about the full hour while everybody got me to say them in different inflections and things. And you get so confused. And normally they go back to the first five takes anyway. It's much better when there's just, say, somebody from the agency, one client and the producer, and they know what they want and you do it. But the more people that come in, they all feel as though they have to put in their little bit. So you get totally confused and you know what you're supposed to be saying. Um, I, I, I enjoy... Um, I approach voice work like I approach acting. I think whatever I'm doing, I'm portraying a character. And even if it's just a 30-second radio commercial, I try and think, OK, what is this voice or this person trying to say and create a character? And I really enjoy that. And I think it's, it's, um, it's great being able to do that just with your voice. It's quite a challenge. So, and I find that really interesting and, and, and a lot of fun, thinking how can I do this and convey this just with my voice, because you haven't got your face and your arms and everything. You've just got headphones on and, and you're in your own headspace, and I find that um, quite exciting. Uh, look, the funniest memories I have from voice jobs are from doing radio drama, which is a bizarre situation. Like You're sitting in a big studio and so all these people sitting around and we're going back to the 70s and 80s and people used to smoke like mad. There'd be smoke in the room and full ashtrays stank to high heaven. And, and, and the, you'd be talking away. It might be a dinner party scene and there's other actors around with knives and forks and plates going clink, 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 clink. And the, they all used to have a car door in, in the wall and you'd hop out of a car and somebody open the door and cut it. And, and different, um, if you're walking, you might have to walk on, on metal, you know, um, stone chips or something and they'd have all the little beds of different surfaces and it's it's very bizarre when you see you look around you see people sort of walking up iron steps and somebody clinking clinking um, cutlery and, and somebody else at the microphone doing the voice and it was so it's just very surreal very surreal very funny I'd, I'd often thought it'd be great to do a little short film on recording a radio play because it'd be more funny than than the actual show itself but I think I've got an ability to um, create characters that are, are real and connect emotionally with an audience. Um, you know, a lot of the, the best stuff I've done has been um, people comment, oh, you know, you, you just sound so, so nice and genuine and warm. And um, I haven't got a um, sort of, you know, the, the stereotyped voiceover voice, but um, I, I, try and, I try and sort of establish an emotional link with the listener. Yeah. Kimmy's dad's a great one, the, the Crimsafe ads, you know, I, I get more comments about those than any other voice job I've done. Every, people stop me in the street, oh, you're Kimmy's dad. And, and I've created that character and given him that warmth and people relate to him. So it's, um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm very pleased with that character actually, how, how it's worked. 
amazing guy in Melbourne called uh, Brian Cox, Coxie, and he runs a, a recovery centre for alcoholics who are past any other help, like this is the last chance they get. And he has quite a big success rate, and I narrated a series um, based on his work, and it worked really well because I decided the way to do it would be to sort of be like, you know, just one of the sort of blokes that comes in, and so I did a blokey sort of thing, and it just just seemed to really, really work. Um, as I remember the Crimsafe ads once. They've got a um, a patented screw clamp or something like that, and I was trying to say patented, patented screw, <laughs> and I kept kept paid to pay that. and in the end the, the technician say, say patented oh yeah great that works but patented didn't sort of it's just little things like that sometimes you'll get a word that you just keep stumbling over and the more you stumble over it the worse it gets but usually the best thing to do is just take a deep breath and have a glass of water and come back to it and it's fine once you make a stumble over a word for some reason it it just keeps coming back and you say I can't stop <laughs> With Kathy, um, Kathy first took me on when I wanted to be a voice artist. Um, but I wasn't sort of that well known as, as a voice artist in this country, but certainly as an actor. And she gave me a go, and I've stuck with her ever since. And I like the fact that the agency's not too big, and you get well looked after, and you know, just and nice people to work with. And uh, she has a lot of respect in the industry out there too, so that reflects on the on the clients. I mean, not having been with another agency, I don't know, but I know with, um, say, my acting agent, uh, she's quite a small, what you'd maybe even call a small boutique agency with not a huge um, client list. I've, I know of actors who do work for agencies with huge client lists. They feel they get, they get lost and they don't get the attention they deserve. And I think it's much better to sort of, for an agent to concentrate on a, a small group of quality people and get them lots of work. Look, sometimes I'll, I'll just turn the radio on in the car and I'm going to a job and sing or talk. It was funny, I was driving, um, I live in Coogee, driving around Randwick and my wife happened to be driving the other way. And when I got home, she said, you were doing your warm up in the car, weren't you? And I said, yeah, I was, how did you know? He said, oh, I watched you and you were just, saw this mouth going down in the car singing. And all this, she couldn't hear the noise, but but I, I do try and do something just to get my voice running. The um, theatre things, you know, pitiga bitiga pitiga bitiga, all this sort of blah, blah 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 stuff to get your mouth moving, and and I sing and and hum and mm, through the nose and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's different every time, you know, tongue twisters and you know Peter Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers and all those sort of things. But I find, you know, if you sing, it sort of opens up, and and I can only do it in the car because nobody would want to hear my voice. I think I've got a voice that appeals to people as a sincere voice and I can put a lot of emotion into it when I want and it's a voice that uh, people believe.